Today we're checking out the Lego Star Wars Mandalorian Trouble on Tatooine set. As mentioned before, this is the Lego Star Wars 2021 Trouble on Tatooine, and it is very cool just looking at the box. Those are my first impressions, and you can see everything on here is from The Mandalorian Season 2. So real quick, I might be having some spoilers from The Mandalorian Season 2, so if you haven't seen that, especially the finale, I definitely recommend it, number one. Number two, you might want to skip ahead to the unboxing at this timestamp. Now, that said, now that all of those guys are gone, you can see the Mandalorian with his full Beskar armor with the child, and this is, of course, the ballista that the Tusken Raiders used to shoot the crate Dragon in the first episode of Season 2, and you can see just all of this looks very nice from the front of the box. Now, one weird thing that I noticed is right down here, where on the Razor Crest it says The Mandalorian, this set actually says The Mandalorian... Well, yeah, The Mandalorian and The Child. So that kind of makes me wonder if Disney Plus is going to have a The Child series, and that's going to be kind of a split-off after we saw Luke Skywalker in the finale take little baby Grogu away, and I think The Mandalorian might kind of go more into the lore with his little ruling of Mandalore now that he has the Darksaber. Now, going on to the back of the box, you can see that we do get a little hut, and we also get our speeder as shown on the front, and of course there is our ballista with a couple of our features. Now let's get into the unboxing. So to get into the box, LEGO gives us these two thumb tabs. However, I don't really like thumb tabs because I like the boxes intact, so I'm going to go ahead and use a butter knife and just kind of wedge it in there, and you can usually kind of break the glue of the thumb tabs if we just get it in there, and then you can just kind of use that. It doesn't even need to be sharp, it's really just a little bit of glue. And then there's usually some glue on the sides, and you kind of have to force it in there. And on the other side, and that's that. So then we can take our fingernails and open up the box. There's that, and inside we will find bag of parts number two. Bag of parts number three. Bag of parts number one. A weirdly big instruction manual for the size of the box. And that'll do it. So let's get into the build. Now that we're finished with the build, we can see the set as a whole. Now starting off with the instructions, you can see that they're pretty basic LEGO instructions and nothing crazy other than at the back, if we look in here, you can see all of the new 2021 sets with the TIE Fighter, the X-Wing, and of course our little Mandalorian set as well as a little micro fighter in there of the Millennium Falcon. Now, one thing that I find very interesting is the fact that we can also see the Lambda class shuttle and the little resistance X-Wing as well as the Tauntaun vs. AT-AT micro fighter. And that's interesting to me because I watch a lot of the leak videos on YouTube and they're definitely fun to look at and a way to see kind of the sneak peek of what's coming out in the future year. Although that is not something that we usually get in a LEGO instruction book and those sets are supposed to release in the March wave of LEGO Star Wars so we should expect those around that time but it's pretty cool to see them early in this little instruction manual so it gives us official little pictures to see what they actually look like. Now, the set itself is pretty cool. I think everything looks very nice. The ballista is sweet. It just looks awesome. It, of course, looks like a giant crossbow. Keys. That is exactly what it is. Now, the speeder looks fantastic. It looks exactly like the Mandalorian speeder from Season 2 and a little bit of Season 1. And it's just very cool. You can clip on his little weapons, 
carry Baby Yoda, and have the Mandalorian ride it, of course. And then we also have our little Tusken Raider hut, and we'll take a closer look at all of these right now. Taking a closer look at the Mandalorian speeder bike, it looks really, really cool. I think they've nailed the little fin pieces at the front, and just the overall build for this speeder I think is very good. You can see at the front he has a couple of little kind of bars sticking out. Not sure what that's supposed to be. Could be little blasters or something. I suppose you could imagine them to be blasters, but that's just a really cool little detail. And this part is actually on a hinge, so you could make it straight like that. Although the instructions and I think that it looks much better kind of flattened like that how it's supposed to be. And then kind of the forks of the speeder bike also look very, very good. And you can see right in between them, you kind of have that beak looking piece right there with this dish up above it just looking a lot like the actual speeder bike in the tv show just looking absolutely awesome and we have our two little handlebars or controls for the speeder bike the little tan seat for the mandalorian to sit on and of course he does actually fit on it and we have a little pouch on the side for grogu to kind of chill out in it's pretty funny that they have just included the little baby carrier piece that we've gotten in lego city and i'm pretty sure multiple other themes but that is what we've got and it works perfectly for grogu's little pouch we have the mandalorian's pistol on this side and then moving on to the other side, you can see that that little greebling piece right there is a little bit different. We also have the Mandalorian's little pouch, which could be the uh, crate dragon meat that he gets from uh, slaying the crate dragon. So that could either be that or just a random kind of saddlebag. And then while we're at the back, you can see under there we do have these couple rounded pieces just for a little bit of extra detail. Now, on the other side here, up above that Greebling, we have the Mandalorian's Pulse Rifle, and that'll do it for his speeder. Let's move on to the Ballista. Here is our complete Ballista, looking really, really cool. The first thing I noticed when I looked at it was the fact that we do have a little gray spring-loaded shooter. I guess these are bolts or the little projectiles and that is actually the little light gunmetal gray and to shoot that you just kind of push down right here and it will go and get lost forever but luckily we do get a second replacement to go with that and I'm pretty sure that is the first time that we've ever gotten a gray spring-loaded shooter projectile. Now on the front we also have this little spool which in the TV show would be the spool attached to the kind of arrow or I suppose it's a bolt for a ballista that it would shoot and the string is attached to that bolt so that it would be able to anchor into the crate dragon and I think it's pretty cool that they've actually given a suggestion that there is some rope in there with those two little technic kind of bearing looking pieces. Now we also have right above that a little bit of vent detail and then of course the little kind of arms of the ballista and those would be what would create the tension to be able to shoot the projectile but in this they just look really cool and we have what would normally be our big kind of string to pull back the projectile but these are just bars and again they still look really cool and I like that they suggested that they're there even though they're not actually functional and we also have the little little pivot points for these arms right here. Now on the back you'll notice that we have this. Now I believe this is to reel in the uh, the wire for the projectile so that you can kind of tension it and be able to make it so that it can actually fire instead of just kind of trying to have 10 guys pull on the same little point and try to anchor it at the back. You have this little crank. Now the little handle at the back I guess is for the little Tuscan Raider to go ahead and grab on. If we take him there we can put him right like that and I guess that's how he's just going to hold on to there. I think it's really funny that it's such a big weapon with just this tiny little handle at the back. It looks really funny and if you want to the way that Lego has attached the handle to the whole ballista you can indeed swivel it. Not entirely sure why you would want to, but it is in fact an option. Let's move on to the Tusken Raiders hut. 
looking at the Tuscan Raiders hut, you can see immediately that we do have a little bit of a campfire in the front. Pretty cool that they've included that, although we only get half of the hut, which does allow you to stick things in there and you can actually see it and play with it inside the hut, although it's kind of odd because it's just half a hut with a campfire in the front. Now, we do have a little gaffy stick in there, and that is, of course, the main weapon of the Tusken Raiders. We also have a bone in a pot for some reason. I would, I would assume that that would be to make some kind of bone broth or something, but that is there. And you can kind of open up the whole hut for better access, and you can see in there that it's basically plain. We do have a little plate in the back, and that'll basically do it other than the little wood-looking piece that's supposed to suggest kind of what's holding together the entire roof. Now, that said, we can move on to our figures. Starting off our figures with the Tusken Raider. Sick people rule! Yes, they do. You can see that his head mold actually looks really nice. This is the same one that we've been getting for a little while now, but it still looks very, very good. While we're at the back, you can see that his back print is the back of his little robes and all of the things that you actually get to see on the front, including his little bandolier with all of the little pouches and things. Just looking really good, pretty simple, but just a good figure overall. Moving on to a little Grogu, you can see that he only has the front print and he also has a little print in his little eyes and this is of course the Lego baby torso piece with a little miniaturized Yoda head. Now on the back, again, there is no print on the back, nor is there on his arms, and his hands are not functional, but they are there to suggest that he is a Lego baby. Now, Mandalorian, over here on the right, you can see that he is by far, I think, the best figure in this set. Maybe not the most, well, actually no, he is the most exclusive figure of the set as well. Grogu, of course, is also a big attraction to this set, considering the only other set that he comes in is the $130 Razor Crest. So this is definitely the cheapest way that you're gonna be able to get him. So moving back to the Mandalorian, you can see that he has his full Beskar armor and a lighter helmet mold to go with that really cool silver printing. And yes, we finally have a figure on the channel with some arm printing. This is actually the first one. And for those of you who are familiar with the actual Mandalorian show, you can see that he does have his little whistling birds down there, as well as his silver armor on his shoulder. And over here, he has his flamethrower and kind of grappler, as well as his signet, the mud horn, on his shoulder. I'm amazed that Lego was able to do that much detail on his little arms, but that is pretty incredible, and Lego has done it anyways. Now around the back, you of course have the back of his armor looking very good, and we do actually get a gray cape instead of the brown cape that we got in the previous version of our Mandalorian figure. Putting our figures in their speeder bike, first off we're going to take little Grogu and we are going to stick him in his pouch. You just kind of push down on him and the connection at the top is strong enough so that you can put a decent amount of force enough to get him in there without having to break it. Now taking Din Djarin, aka the Mandalorian, you can just kind of fold his legs as you would normally and then you just kind of stick him on his speeder bike and there's only two studs in there so he's not going to lose his legs when you try to take him out. With that said, let's go on to the overview. Overall, I think this is a really cool kit. For about 30 bucks, you're getting the Mandalorian, Grogu, a Tusken Raider, a little Tusken Raider hut, a ballista, and a speeder bike. I think that's a pretty good value, especially when you consider the figures. Now, the Tusken Raider is about average. Grogu is pretty good and I think very good for a little Lego baby. And the Mandalorian himself is looking super spiffy with his full Beskar armor. And I think the arm prints are a real big attraction and could add some value to the figure in the future. Now, that said, if you want to pick yourself 
up one of these, you can check out the links in the description below. I'll also have some other Star Wars sets in case you want to get those too. Now, that said, like, subscribe, click that bell so you never miss a video. Be sure to check out this video, which is actually a bunch of videos. That is our Star Wars playlist. And be sure to check out our most recently uploaded video, which is super awesome, and I highly recommend that you watch it. Now, I'll see you next time on Nuclear Fusion.